These are some of the cheapest Xbox upgrades that you can do to make your Xbox run faster and smoother, customize the aesthetic of your console, or without breaking the bank and spending way too much money. This first upgrade literally will cost you $0 and it allows you to customize the color of your power button. In a past video, we tried out various Xbox life hacks, and one of those was this tip that lets you change the color of the LED button. This was achieved by using a section of a colored carrier bag and cutting it into a small square, and the final results were actually quite cool. However, this time we're going to step things up and probably make them be a little bit safer. So on Amazon for around $5, you can pick up these little colored gels and these come in a variety of different sizes. You can also get them for the Xbox controller power buttons. But these larger ones are actually used for your Xbox power button right here. So you see how they fit perfectly over that. So you can expect to get much better results with the colors being a little bit more vibrant and powerful with these colored gels. It's a bit more intentional. The process of fitting these colored gels is exactly the same as the colored carrier bag. You just take your console apart, but you don't need to take it completely apart. It's just literally removing the main front covers. And then from there, no matter what Xbox you've got, you can place one of these gels over the white LED that illuminates the power button, and it will transform the aesthetics of your console. And with this super cheap $5 kit, you have a huge range of colors that you can choose from to get that perfect look. Now, if you are running an older Xbox console, such as an Xbox One, Xbox One S, or even an Xbox One X, this next upgrade will actually make your console run way faster. The biggest issue with the older Xbox hardware is the fact that all of those consoles have got a mechanical hard drive inside of them. So they're incredibly slow in terms of loading times when you're trying to load in games. It can take like a couple of minutes sometimes to get into certain titles. And also like it can feel a little bit sluggish when you're trying to navigate the menus, things just don't really respond as quickly as maybe they did back when this was a newer console. And since the release of the Xbox Series S and X and those super duper fast next generation NVMe SSD speeds, if your friends do have a newer console and you're still stuck on your older one, you do feel a little bit left behind when they're getting into a lobby way quicker. Well, thankfully, you can actually upgrade the storage in these older Xboxes super easily and upgrade and get way faster speeds just by switching the hard drive out for an SSD drive. This SSD drive right here was super cheap and it only cost me around $45, $50 and it's a two terabyte SSD. So it's actually going to double the internal storage of this one terabyte Xbox One X. So the process of upgrading the SSD within your Xbox One is, is pretty straightforward. So the console I'm using is the Xbox One X in particular. This is probably one of the easiest Xbox consoles to take apart. Firstly, you want to start with removing the two rear screws at the back of the console. Now do bear in mind, this will void any warranty that remains on this Xbox console as you remove this stickers and break the seal. Then from here, the top cover will just easily slide away and you can then remove the various screws at the top of the console. And these are the ones that you want to remove in particular in the red circles. Now, once you've got the main cover off the Xbox, you will actually see the hard drive. So as you can see right here through this little grill, that is the spinning disc of the hard drive that we're going to replace with the SSD. So we now just need to you know, flip this around, take some screws out and uncover this. So now that our Xbox has successfully been taken apart, all we've got to do is just remove the hard drive. You then want to make sure that you disconnect this little tiny cable on the front of the console. And I recommend using the little pliers that are found inside of the iFixit toolkit so you don't accidentally break this and you can just get it out as easily and quickly as possible. Next, you'll peel away the final plastic cover and this will reveal the last few screws that we will remove. There's just two that we need to take out here. Then we'll be able to free the two metal chassis from one another to get access to the disk drive and the hard drive. So simply by literally just removing the power cable for the hard drive and then obviously the SATA connection into the motherboard, this will then let it break free and we can then just remove it from this bracket and replace it. Then what you'll notice is this hard drive and the SSD are the exact same size. So it'll just literally fit straight into this bracket, connecting to the SATA cables here and then we can just install the OS and we're good to go. From here, you can then switch the hard drive out for the SSD just by removing a couple of screws and then place the newly fitted SSD back into the motherboard, plug the SATA cable and power cable back in, and that's pretty much it. The final steps are just rebuilding your Xbox console, putting all the screws back into the correct place, and then placing all of the plastic covers back onto the exterior. So once you've put your console back together, we now need to reinstall the operating system. Now you can clone some of the hard drives if you wanna go down that route, but we're gonna do a fresh installation of the Xbox OS. The way we do this is we need to go over to this website right here. And then from there, we can install basically a media installation tool, just like you would installing like Windows onto your PC for the first time. Now the USB stick that we're going to use for this needs to be a larger than five gigabytes because this download file is five gigabytes itself. And then we're gonna go ahead, install this, format our USB stick to be NTFS, and then we can unzip 
this folder onto that drive. But all of those instructions are laid out on the official Microsoft website. Then when you first restart your console, it will appear in safe mode just like this. And on this SSD drive, I have got my OS system. So we'll go ahead and plug this into our console. Then once your SSD is successfully connected, this update will appear in the top right hand corner. Then using the D-pad on our controller to navigate this menu, we're gonna go down to troubleshooting. You can then initiate this update. It'll take around 10 minutes and you've just upgraded the storage on your Xbox, as easy as that. So if you're a long time viewer of the channel, and if you aren't, you should consider subscribing because we make loads of cool Xbox videos. Anyways, you will probably recognize this next accessory from a past video where I tested some of the coolest Xbox accessories ever made. Now in that video, we were a little bit disappointed by the final results of this RGB light mod for the Xbox Series S, and that's because it ended up getting damaged. After I had went through the lengthy and arduous installation process, one of the wires actually got damaged when I rebuilt my Xbox, so it didn't work. But this time, we are going to try again from everything that I learned, and we're going to get it to work 100% because it looks so epic. So for around $25, $30, you can pick up a huge range of RGB light mod kits for all of the Xbox consoles, regardless of the one that you've got. The one for the Xbox Series X is very easy to fit. You just remove the fan and stick it on and job sorted. But the hardest one is the Xbox Series S because of how small this console is. So I'm going to talk you through the process of this exact console because this is by far probably the best one when it actually works. So what we've got inside of the box is pretty simple. You've got a, a remote control to actually change the color of the lights once they're installed. And then it does actually come included with some tools, but these tools are terrible. Like when you try and use these cheap ply things, they just, they just break with, within a few moments. And you do also get an Allen key for the special attachments on the Xbox consoles because they do have special screw heads that a traditional like sort of Phillips screwdriver won't be able to access. So instead, what we want to use is an iFixit toolkit. I'll leave a link to one of these in the video description down below. I bought this uh, like about a year ago and it made my life so much easier when it comes to building gaming PCs, but more particularly modding my gaming consoles because of all of the tools that it comes included with. And look at all of these attachments that you have. Every, everything you need here for, for taking an Xbox apart, you've got all of the parts and you just literally like attach it straight into the end of your little screwdriver. Furthermore, this kit does also come with a bunch of different pliers and prying tools, just like the rubbish that came included with this kit, but these are significantly higher quality and more durable, so they'll do a much better job. So the first stage is actually taking the Xbox Series S apart correctly. Now every Xbox will have its exterior screws hidden by these sort of little sticky back plastic covers. As soon as you take these off, you will need to heat them up with a heat gun, you know, depending on which console you've got. You will void the warranty of your console, but you know, I don't really care about that because I'm here to make an entertaining YouTube video. Then using our iFixit toolkit, we can try the various different attachments to make sure that we get the right size, and then we can go ahead and remove this first cover. And then so we don't lose all of our screws, using the lid of the iFixit toolkit, you see how it's got this little checkered grid? We can use this as areas to store our screws nicely out of the way, it works really well. So then this top cover will just literally slide off. And a cool fact about the Xbox Series S, it has a little hidden Easter egg right here that says, hello from Seattle, which is obviously where Xbox's HQ is. Now it gets to the serious part where we actually are going to deconstruct the Xbox Series S. Now we will need to change the attachment for our screwdriver because these screw heads are a little bit larger. So it's the same style of screw head, it's just a little bit bigger. Um, so we don't actually you know, thread everything, do it properly. And we'll just go ahead and remove the screws we need to. Now for this particular mod, we're going to remove all of the green screws as these are the ones that basically attach this inner heat shield, the metal bit, to the bottom of this case, so it just uh, separates that. But also we need to remove these two right here, these two silver ones, just to be able to lift this cover off and get in and, and actually modify like the fan, for example. So now that we've removed all of the green ones, this should now break free from itself. There we go. So that is now separate from its back cover. And then the final two screws that we will need to remove are these two here, which will just basically free like the fans so we can modify that in a moment. But because these green screws have been removed, we can now split this in two and actually get access to this area. It's very simple to take apart. It's nothing too crazy. So we'll now remove these little ones for the, the actual fan. And then we can go ahead and attach some of the things we need to. Perfect, so this should take away. You don't want to obviously grab it aggressively, but that now removes off the heatsink. And we're going to disconnect the fan from this fan header. Now, if you're using the provided tools with the toolkit, you'll use this little cheap one to just sort of pop it out. But we're going to use our good quality stuff and we're just going to wiggle it out really easily. It should just ease out. You don't need to like 
ram it aggressively it should literally just ease out when you just wiggle it a little bit and now our fan is, is completely free now we can move on to beginning the installation process of this cool rgb light mod so you can see the series s1 in particular is very complicated you got all of these different um parts to it which is what makes it quite difficult but we're first going to start with the easiest thing which is just plugging it in <laughs> so we've got this little circuit board extension here that's going to plug into that fan header that we just removed via this cable now this is a very clever bit of circuit board that they've got this little motherboard because it, it acts as basically a fan splitter so you've got a, an extra port here which is where our fan will plug in so we can actually keep the console cool but of the same piece of motherboard and circuit and this cable it will power all of the rgb stuff so we don't have any exterior cables that are plugging into USB ports and things. It's all kept housed inside of the console nice and tidy. So we will plug this straight in to the motherboard. Just pop it into that fan header. Use your little tool to just press that down. And then we'll grab our actual fan and also plug that into the motherboard. We'll then put our fan back into place, just dead easy. And then this little cool motherboard is actually designed to arc around right here. So it'll stick down with the provided sticky tape. Now there's one cable that's very important that we don't forget to root. And it's this little sort of IR sensor, like a little infrared controller receiver. This is for our RGB remote for controlling all of the light effects. So it can actually communicate with this hub here. So we need to just take this quite large cable. And as you see there, it's got that little receivery bit at the end. And we're going to root this up behind the PSU so it's popping out here so we can put it out of the, the console at a later date. So now we want to start work on the big circular RGB which is going to be obviously mounted at this position so it lights up the fan grid. And this will actually take quite a bit of time because we've got to get each of these individual 3M sticky tapes and basically put them along the circumference of this circle and it'll take quite 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 a bit of time so we'll do these. So now that that is complete we're going to go ahead and flip this over and then attach our RGB light strip to the top part right here and then once this is completed it will just obviously stick like so into place so now that we've got that successfully attached we just want to go ahead and remove all of the 3m's tape again using the pliers with the iFixit toolkit it makes it way easier than struggling with your thumb then we'll take the cover of our console and we're going to attach it on a slight angle so it'll be orientated uh, roughly like this make sure all the cables are out neat now that that is in place, we want to organize this huge heap of cables here because it's very important that we get these the right way around. So to make this as easy as possible, the instructions have everything labeled. So you've got number one, number two, number three, and number four. So if we go ahead and find where number one is, that will be the longest cable. Then it's quite straightforward from here. We just basically attach, you know, number one here and then number two on the bottom, and then we repeat the same for the other side. Right, so that's finally installed. It took quite a bit of time just to get it all right. We now need to do a final few things for the cable management. So we need to route these cables with some sticky sided tape down the side so they don't get caught. It's really important that you do this really accurately. Otherwise these will get caught and snap when you put this Xbox back together and it, and it just won't work. That's what happened to me last time. So we need to make sure we do an even better job than previously and make sure these are all safe and out of the way so they don't get caught in any lips on the actual case. Second thing we also need to do is put these little black stickers over the RGB stuff here. I think this is just going to help it sort of reflect a little bit better onto this little ring. So all the black tape's in. Now the final step is grabbing these little sticky sided tape and obviously running these cables uh, down here. And then you can expect your Xbox to look a little something like this and you can scroll through the variety of different lighting effects with the controller. So this final upgrade is probably the most useful one and it will help you level up your controller on a budget. Things like the Xbox Series Elite 2 are fantastic pro controllers, but they cost an absolute fortune at around $180. Whereas with this little mod upgrade that comes in quite a stylish case, you can get very similar functionality with the interchangeable swappable thumbsticks. Now, most people, the two key features why they get the pro controller is either the rear back paddles or the fact they can change the thumbstick heights to something a little bit more comfortable. And the crazy thing is, these weren't that expensive. They were literally like $15 for this whole pack. Now essentially what you do is you take your Xbox controller apart, which isn't too difficult to do. You remove a few screws off of the back and then you pop the top shell off. And then that's all you really need to do for this style of modification. It isn't like that RGB light mod that I did a few months ago that required us to take the entire assembly of the controller into pieces. You then pop the factory default thumbstick caps off and then replace them with these new ones. And they come in a variety of different colors. And I got these cool ones in this like metallic red. And then you can reassemble the controller as easy as that. And you've now got interchangeable thumbsticks and they'll work basically just as follows so you've got your different size caps and they just click into place 
onto that little thumbstick dome and then you can just pull them off. And these are some of the variations that you get. You've got some round dome style ones, similar to a PS3 controller. There's some low profile ones that have got some nice grip textures to them that look pretty comfortable. And then probably my personal favorite is this increased height one, which is great for sort of FPS shooters. And again, it's got that nice thumb grip to it. And just like everything else in this video, I'll leave a link to these down below in the video description. These are just some of the easiest things that you can upgrade on your Xbox. But if you want to see me try some of the craziest tips and tricks for Xbox gamers, you should check out this video next.